So Deontay Wilder uh, has gained a lot of options since Andy Ruiz has acted like Wilder was hard to get along with and different things like that. Now uh, Usyk promoter has uh, said that um, Wilder is g g basically guaranteed the top three uh, heavyweight uh, in the world to him. Top three heavyweight talent, you know what I'm saying? Top heavyweight, uh, top three heavyweight boxer in the world. So if he had to put Usyk and uh, Fury top two, he'll put uh, Wilder number three. That's saying a lot, you know what I'm saying? After uh, uh, Ngannou uh, fight, most people would say Ngannou is number three. I I personally don't have a problem with anybody saying anything about Ngannou because uh, everybody's a doubted Ngannou enough, so. But for Wilder, you know what I'm saying, uh, to be top three from Usyk's promoter, you know what I'm saying, I have a lot of respect for that man for saying that because we all know popular opinion, you know, most uh, people would not say he's number three right now. They'll try to give some cheap reason of why uh, he wouldn't be considered that. But uh, Usyk's promoter has uh, said some good things. If, if he wanted to say Ngano, I wouldn't be mad either. Trust me, I wouldn't be mad. But uh, it's good to see him acknowledge uh, Wilder for uh, the things he's done in the past because a lot of people try to say that uh, those things don't matter. But he also has said something very important as far as Wilder uh, being an option for a match in the future, possibly if things can fall into place the right way uh, with Usyk um, in the Fury fight. If, does it, if that, uh, that doesn't uh, trickle down and become a... A thing that has to be rematched and trilogied and all that stuff. I mean, it could be an option. So that lets you know that everybody right now is an option. Uh, Wilder is an option for basically anybody who's available. That's a top guy. For some reason, Andrew Ruiz is the only one who's not available. For I mean, Wilder's not available for Andrew Ruiz, but everybody else he's available for. He's easy to work with. And then him and Andy Ruiz, they basically had the same uh, people they're working with. Except uh, Wilder has uh, Shelly Finkel and all these other guys, but they're basically dealing with the same people. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like they're going to different investors and different guys asking for uh, a whole bunch. So um, he says that uh, that would be a good fight. It depends on how Usyk's uh, career looks. You know what I'm saying? Depend depends on the uh, Fury win. Maybe Usyk might want to walk off into the uh, sunset with a win. Maybe he would like to defend the title. Maybe he would like to try to look better after a loss to Fury or try to uh, double dip as far as in the cash flow, try to hit two cash cows at heavyweight. Why not? I mean, I wouldn't have no problem with that. Usyk has already done enough in the uh, division. It, uh, a lot more of these other guys have. A lot of guys didn't want to fight uh, Anthony Joshua or Fury. As soon as Wilder and uh, Usyk fought, uh, shows up, now they're fighting Wild. They're fighting Fury and Joshua and all these other guys. So I've never doubted uh, Usyk uh, fighting Wild. It's just the plans of everything. I don't like. Uh, it just at the time I've seen, I said I mean it, it was kind of hard for me seeing Usyk fight uh, Wilder before he fought Fury, taking that risk. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys will sit on their hands, which he did. You know what I'm saying? Which I didn't get that prediction right. I mean wrong. I didn't get that wrong. Obviously that's what he did. He waited until Fury became available. Even though he did fight the bar, uh, it's not the same as fighting um, Wilder. You know what I'm saying? It's just not. It's a way bigger risk. But I feel like um, with the things they're doing over there in the uh, UK and uh, different things, it's all coming together. You know, Frank Warren's doing uh, a lot more different things. Uh, Eddie Hearn's doing the same old thing. But uh, I don't see a problem with that. I feel like that would work well with uh, the era, especially the way it's going right now. Um, most of the heavyweights, they've all fought each other or they got losses already. As um, Joe Joyce was like to say, most heavyweights all got lost, and so it's not like most of the guys will have to uh, pick between which one and who's more qualified. You know, they all coming off of losses and trying to get back to that status. Uh, 
uh, it's a huge era right now. It's a lot of guys who's been fighting for a long time. Um, I didn't think a lot of guys would have a big fight after this, another big fight, but with Parker fighting Wilder and all these different things coming together, it's uh, making for a, a great year of boxing to end and to start next year. Because I see now that uh, Fury's an option for a lot of guys. He's not a permanent option. He's not a guaranteed option for Wilder, but he's an option. You know what I'm saying? For his promoter to come out and say that, that's better than nothing. You know what I'm saying? I will take that. And uh, I will archive that and remember that. But it's not something I'm going to hold against him if it doesn't happen. It's just something that I know that possibly can happen. A lot of people will try to say, oh, uh, well, Wilder's not qualified and this. Well, I Obviously, Usyk, the promoter, feels like he qualified. So that's not something that um, I can really shrug at as far as uh, just looking past or things like that. But I feel like uh, Usyk has basically uh, done a lot of things uh, as far as help bring balance to the heavyweight division. Along with uh, a lot of guys have done that with certain divisions. Wilder's done that with heavyweight division. As a whole, he's brought the excitement and everything as a whole. Uh, a lot of guys have done that in certain different divisions. Um, a lot of guys like Tank Davis have done it in lower weight classes. In a way, uh, Navarrete, a lot of different guys. But when you bring that excitement like how Wild is bringing it, and uh, you can bring all the heavyweights together and kind of celebrate the era, it's a different... Um, way about things. It's a different kind of way uh, things are going right now. You haven't had fights like this since back in the day and this card is loaded. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen a card this loaded in a long time. To be honest, this is a very, very loaded card. From the undercard up, they really don't have many fights like this. So This is one of those ones people have to enjoy. But uh, Usyk's promoter is basically doing a lot of uh, things. You know, he's doing some Justin Cases and some, you know, the money could uh, get better over time, especially very soon. So I'm pretty sure he's not overlooking anything like that. But that goes to show that a lot of fans, you know what I'm saying, they just... They just don't want to agree with what Wilder has going on. It seems like all, none of the uh, boxer promoters or boxers in uh, the UK or Europe have a problem with Deontay Wilder except for uh, the fans. Because Usyk's promoters seems like he's the top guy still. After uh, the losses, people said it was embarrassment. No, nah, it feels like a lot of guys are... Um, Clinging on to Wilder, they still look at him as a top guy. They still treat Wilder as a world champion, honestly. But it's just a good look, though. You know, overall for boxing, all these guys are great at uh at their own uh in their own little situation, their own little just area of things. They're all great. But this is definitely going to take Boston to another level. Just having big fights like this, just the possibilities. It doesn't have to be a guarantee, but just to have the possibility and the talks about it. I'm liking what I'm hearing from the UK and uh, different areas. But that's all I got, though. Like and subscribe.